Hello, hello. I've come to show you how to put multiple images into a page ready to print. The images I'm using have all come from the old design shop. Some are from um, Julie's blog and some are from her website on uh, her Etsy. Now, um, the first thing I'm going to show you how to do is if you're new to Photoshop, what, what might get a little bit confusing is the tabs at the top. Now, I've got four images open at the moment, but as you can see, we can only see three of them. If I click this double arrow here, you will be able to see all four images and you can absolutely click on them and work with them from here, which is what I do. Now, if you're new, it might be a little bit too confusing to do that. So I'm going to show you a way of um, changing these so you can get all of your tabs in the top and that's to go to File and Save As and just to give these a shorter file name. Just for speed, I'm going to call this one A. I'm going to replace it because I've done this video once already and things didn't go quite to plan. My Photoshop is not playing ball today. So I'm going to call this one B. And again, I'm going to replace the one that I did earlier. And I'm going to call this one C. It seems to be working now, but my Photoshop decided to go on a real go slow, which is not good when you're trying to record a video. So I've just very quickly gone ahead and changed all of the file names to A, B, C and D and as you can see the file names are now much smaller and they all fit in our tab bar. So the next thing we need to do is we need to open a new document. So I'm going to go to file and new and we're going to, hopefully this is not going to take as long as it did in the last attempt, we're going to open a new A4 document. Now, like I said, my Photoshop is not really playing ball today and um, I'm hoping we're not going to have to wait too long and you're not going to have to listen to me trying to fill in some some time. OK, we're getting there. We are getting there. I'm sure your um, Photoshop is a lot quicker. So here's our A4. I'm going to double click on that. And as you can see, it's an untitled document at the moment. It's not saved as anything. So... What we're going to do is we're going to make sure all of our documents are the right size before we put them into our image. There is obviously you can transfer them straight into your blank document and then you can use the transform tool to resize them but we're going to resize them before we move them in. Now I don't know what size these documents are at the moment but I'm going to unlock each one before I start working on it. I'm going to go to image and I'm going to go to image size. Now, as you can see, this one is quite large. It's 26 centimetres wide and 19 centimetres high. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to... Yours might look like this when you open it. It might look like that, where you've got these two little bars. You want to make sure you've got these bars. So click your lock, the proportions button, and make sure you're going to alter both sides. Now, this is when you need to decide what size you actually want your images to be. Now, I'm going to just change the width of all of these to, let's say, 7, 7 centimetres, and it's going to automatically adjust our height. But I want them all, all the same, and I'm going to hit OK. Now, you can see it's made that much, much smaller. So the first way to get your image into your blank document is to literally hit Command or Control C to copy, click on your um, blank document and control or command V to paste it in. Now we could just pop these images willy nilly all over the place but I want mine nicely lined up so what you need to do is you need to go to view and make sure your rulers are showing along the sides and the top here. You're going to click and drag your ruler down I'm going to bring this down let's say just two centimetres I'm going to bring one approximately two centimetres up from the bottom I'm going to click and drag two centimetres um, roughly there from the side and I'm going to click one here. Now what this allows you to do is it allows you to have a nice straight edge so when we move it about I'm going to drop it into place and when you cut your images out you're going to have a nice straight edge. It makes life a little bit easier later on. So our first image is in. So I don't need this one anymore. I'm going to close it just to get it out of the way. I'm not going to save that. So I'm now going to go to B, I'm going to unlock it, I'm going to go to image, image size, my proportions are locked, I want this one 7cm again because I want all of my images nice and even, I'm going to hit OK, I'm going to click my layer, 
drag it up here and I'm going to drop it in. So that's the second way we can check, um, get images in. Right. Now this is a white background so it's a little bit more difficult to line it up. Um, basically this one you would just have to cut it as best you can. However there is a way we could um, put an edge on this. Um, I'm not going to do it now because it will probably not, not work correctly. So image B is done. We're going to close that and not save it. So image C, we're going to unlock it, we're going to go to image, image size, we're going to change our width to 7 and hit OK and you can see it's smaller again. So just one more time we're going to click and drag our layer up to our toolbar and then we're going to drop it into place and we're going to line that one up too. Now you could, if this was, um, you know, you can... You can, well, basically, you can drop them wherever you want. Cutting them out is going to be um, however you want to do that. So I'm just going to close that one and not save it. So here we go with the last one. We're going to go to image, image size, seven centimeters, and OK. Now, obviously, those drop down boxes you can change. Let's have another look. Image size. You can change this to pixels or you can change it to inches, you can change it to percentage. So if you want to reduce everything by 50%, you can do that. You can use whatever of these you decide. I basically only use the centimeters or pixels. So we've now got another seven. I'm going to unlock that and I'm going to drag it up into my document and I'm going to release it to let that go. So now all of our images are seven centimeters. You can see where this would be really handy if you wanted to make ATC cards, anything like that. You can change the size of your image and be a bit more precise. You might, um, in some cases, you don't actually need to lock the proportions. It depends on the image. You're just going to have to play around with that. Um, but here we go. Um, when you move the, your images up and down, you're going to see these pink lines appear. Now, the pink line was across the top, so I now know I can have a nice straight cut along here, and I've still got my nice straight cut along here. Um, it just makes life a bit easier when you are trying to cut. So, all you need to do now is go ahead and file and save as. Um, I'm just going to drag my layers up a bit so you can see a little bit more. So what you can see is we've got our background layer and we've got all of our layers that we've added. Now I can click here or I can click on the images and as you can see on the right hand side in the layers palette as I click on each one it's going to change the layer I'm working on. So that's just something you need to bear in mind if you want to move an image. Make sure you've got the right image selected before. Um, and again, if you're going to add any adjustment layers, things like that, you need to make sure it's at the top so it affects all of the layers underneath. So that is the tutorial for today. Don't forget to save it as a JPEG if you want to go ahead and print. I hope you found that useful. Obviously, you can get a lot more than four images on. I would recommend only opening maybe three, four images at a time. Uh, it does make things easier if you're not used to Photoshop. So thanks for watching and I will be back next week with another Photoshop tutorial.